certain U.S. airports have started to deny entry to Chinese graduate students trying to come back to the U.S. from China, even the ones from Yale University. So we got to talk about it. What's going on? You know, for me, I just went back for the year of the dragon, and now I've been dragged into some sort of geopolitical beef. What's going on? The geopolitical wars of the world. Let's read the headline. China says students, including those at Yale, are subjected to interrogations and deportations at U.S. entry points. Andrew, the main U.S. entry point is Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. They've yeah. been deporting the most. Yeah, Dulles Airport. I mean, I think Washington, D.C., it being the nation's capital, I guess I could see them being the strictest. But anyways, David... Basically, what's happening is that these are Chinese graduate students who go to Yale University, but might have gone to undergrad in China. And that's part of the issue here. I'm going to get into the details of something that I read off the Yale News website. But basically, they're getting to the airport after visiting China. And then the, the, all the TSA and everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you from? What, blah, 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 blah. Let us interrogate you. And then even after a 12 or 8 hour interrogation... They're sending them back to Woo, China. We got to talk about it, man. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. By the way, guys, check out SmileLastSauce, SmileLastSauce.com. I'll say this. Obviously, this is unfortunate, Andrew. Geopolitical tensions are at a high right now. I do think it is variable per airport. You know what I mean? Like, mm. if you flew into a different airport, they might not have that protocol or even that knowledge base in place. You mean certain airports are probably going to be more on top of things and more strict Enforcing because this is something that was especially enforced during the Trump administration. But I will say this during the Biden administration, I heard it didn't get flipped and turned over. So people are still operating off of the Trump, uh, the Trump. Yeah, protocol. I mean, let's be honest. These grad students, if they had a macro bird's eye view of like the tone or the temperature, they probably shouldn't have flown back. You think you know so? I mean? yeah. Like I know some Chinese grad students in New York right now that are like, yeah, I'm not going to go back. I cannot take the risk. Right, because you just don't know what's going to happen. Even if you have a valid visa, that doesn't mean that you can't, that you will be for sure let in. Because if they find any reason, any reason at all, which the reason is for some of these people, um, for example, one student from Yale, a graduate student, a PhD student at Yale named Zhang, he uh, basically it's because his undergraduate college in China was considered to be involved in part of a government military civil fusion strategy. I don't know what that means, but it was deemed as a potentially military adjacent college. Right, like a quasi West Point or something like that. Uh, or something like that. I'm Maybe not even West Point level, but something that having to do with the Chinese military yeah, programming. Yeah, yeah. And since he graduated from there as an undergrad and then he goes to Yale... When he tried to come back, I guess they denied him. And it's unfortunate. I'm not saying there aren't legitimate reasons to deny somebody entry, but right now, so much stuff is in a gray zone. Mm. You know, Andrew, as an undergrad, he may have just been like, yeah, it was just a good project to participate in. You know what I mean? Like, he's just trying to build his right. resume. Right. He's like, yeah, they're funding the research. I'm doing it. He's not even thinking about any of this stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously, um, obviously America has the right to make the reads that they see fit too, like on the flip side. Yes. But who's making the reads and with what threshold or like, you know what I mean? Information. Or, or, you know? or are any of these people being racist? We don't know. But anyways, we're going to get in the comment section because I think there's a, uh, a, a range of opinions. I went on some of the subreddits, Andrew, that are more like definitely not Asians, right? They were more like, listen, there was good reason. If you get sent away... They've done the investigation. They've done their due diligence. You deserve to be considered untrustworthy. That is an opinion on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I have a friend who is a Asian guy from Britain, born and raised in Britain, and he got denied at the Seattle airport because, not because he wasn't supposed to be, he had done no crime, but he was kind of like, working when he wasn't supposed to and if you're visiting the u.s from the international right. space uh, from any country even from canada you're not supposed to make money and work in america without a work visa right so technically he was working on the low getting paid uh beneath under the table um and they found that out how did they find that out i don't know they interrogated him obviously and this guy he's not even a chinese citizen at all so well, he's a british citizen yeah he's a british citizen pure british so um it wasn't because he was Asian then, but it was because he was doing something he wasn't supposed to. Right, so right. I guess the argument is that 
these people did the due diligence and found some reason to deny this student entry, even though they had been a Yale graduate student. Right. Somebody said that it was, how come it's just all from one airport? Doesn't it go to show you that different airports have different leadership and different mm, standards? You're right. You're right. You're right. Duelist Airport in Washington. I think maybe that one's the strictest though, because it's kind of Washington, D.C. That's like flying into Beijing versus like, you could fly into Chengdu. Chengdu, everybody's a rapper or a yeah. tattoo artist. You go to Beijing, everybody works. Yeah, who the knows? Maybe if these people had flown into the New Orleans airport or Atlanta or Kansas City or they're like, here's some whiskey, here's some bourbon. Get in there, Zang. Party it or, up. Or even SFO. I don't know. I don't know why it's particularly the Washington, DC airport. I don't know. Well, there, if, there's some logic to yeah, it. Yeah, there I guess there's logic. Um Somebody just said, no, it's actually systematic uh, sinophobia in America. Mm. You know, just like when you take a trip to Russia and you come back, you might get questioned for an extra 10, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, David, this is true. Like, I noticed that even when we got back from certain countries, even when uh, we're going through the end of customs, not that I've been interrogated, but they did, like, ask some extra questions like that quick interview at the end, you know, when you do pass them their for passport. sure, for sure. If you come back from China, they're going to ask you a few more questions. than if you come back from France, maybe if you come back from France, they're just like, Hey, good bread over there. Right. I remember one time, one customs agent was like, uh, Hey man, welcome back to home. Huh? They, they don't have all that, the, the guns and the hunting and the fishing and the shooting ranges. Like we got over here. Right. Cause he like kind of saw me, I guess as a, I don't know, like an outdoorsy guy or something like that. And I was just like, Oh, no, they don't have shooting ranges over there. Well, we were coming back from Asia? Yeah, I was coming back from China. Oh, yeah. So there was some sense of like, hey, man, you're on our team, right? Like, you're on team, like, outdoorsmen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Can't wait to throw back some beers and shoot some guns, huh? I was like, Mr. Hey, David I, Funk. I, I was like, are you in, inviting me? Am I going <laughs> to the... <laughs> like, is there a kickback somewhere? Right, Where's right, the right. barbecue? Are we going on ATVs? I'm invited to the mud swamp or whatever. I mean, man... Some, you know, and it's so funny in the comment section. Some people are going to be mad at us that we're not going hard enough at American customs. And some people are going to be mad at us because they're like, yeah, China is an enemy combatant right now from a narrative mm. level. You guys can't see that because you know what is so crazy about it, Andrew? Both things have some truth to them mm. that like I get the rival aspect. There's some legitimate rivalries going on right now with, the, you know, PhDs in science or whatever, but it's also been super politicized and trumped up in the media. I think and, and exaggerated <laughs> by people who do not know the hardcore yeah. semantics and the logistics. Listen, nobody really knows what's going on. I know some grad students here who don't know if they'll be allowed to come back into the U S if they leave back to China. So the truth is, is there a way to make it clear to people? Like, should you just tell all grad students, hey, be very, very careful. You might not want to leave to go back to China right now just because they, we don't know because this is the times. This is the geopolitical vibe right now. Unfortunately, there is tension. There is possibly a war going on, uh, essentially going on right now. We don't know if it's been going on or if it's not about to start or whatever. So be more careful. Like, is that the message that should be sent to Chinese international grad students because like, should it be clear? Because it's like, Man, I think it's terrible to, to be working so hard for a PhD program. And then you go back, you're like, Oh, I want to visit my family during right. Chinese new year. And then you can't come back to America. You know, finish. there's the reality of it and how it plays out in politics. I think that the reality, if you really look at the trade relations and the amount of economics that's going back and forth, it's way closer to frenemies than enemies but the yeah. way it's sold in the media and people are trying to score points for their political crowd to win elections to yeah. do things to look tough on this yeah. look tough on that there's a lot of posturing and almost like pr campaigns and a few grad students not being able to finish their phd andrew that's nothing to a politician wanting to make a statement no for sure for but sure. you know what i'm saying it's like there's the reality of it, and then there's how it's playing out, and that almost becomes people's reality who don't study the actual thing. Yeah. And yeah. it's unfortunate, and there's a lot of uh, collateral damage in that, and people's PhD programs, that, that's nothing right. to somebody to chalk well, it up, to be uh, like, yo, this was just a pawn in posturing or whatever, or, or jujitsuing this thing. Like, uh, this guy brought up that there has been longstanding sinophobia in America because do less Andrew, the guy who, that the airport is named after in Washington, DC one time was pro, uh, posturing in the Pentagon that they should nuke China back in 1958. So the irony is that at the Doulas airport, 
the duelist man who's named after wanted to nuke China. Yes. Or at least thought of that he had idea. Pro- they had discussions. And it was over something that totally was like, that was like complete overkill. And I will ask this, why is America always talking about nuking Asians, man? Yeah. Yeah, America, you want to nuke anybody else but Asians? <laughs> it'd, be Only inter- Asians. it'd be interesting if there was ever a nuke again and it was also on Asian-looking people. That would be really telling. <laughs> Yeah, if it's two for two or three for three, guys, come on. I mean, that's there's a pattern. So anyways, uh, guys, yeah, this is a complicated issue. We obviously do not know the details of why these students got denied. Do they unfortunately have some family ties that are yeah. closer to the Chinese government I can and get military? It. If the dad or the uncle is a general, it's logical. Yeah. The logic would it make is, sense. It is true. It is true that they are, we're in a complicated time and it is not cut and dry and, and, uh, uh, yeah, I just don't and know. People's academic on. careers are essentially collateral damage yeah. to, to the times. Well, I mean, a lot of them can still finish online, but they can't come back to America. And I don't know, guys. Uh, being Chinese uh, yet again is confusing in America. But anyways, you guys let us know in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion. Share your perspective. Share your opinions. Do you know anybody who ever got denied at the airport? Why or why was that? I know people personally. I've also been interrogated. At the Canadian border, oh trying to get my into Canada. Goodness, man, we got man. I'll tell Just you this: from being Chinese, into Canada. bro, the ch- being Chinese going into Canada, Canada coming into the U.S., flying back from China, but, man, but, but, you get is different. Yeah, you, if you if you guys being, don't know what that's like. Being Asian, trying to cross into the Canadian border and getting stopped, interrogated. I think that was because they thought we were like some AZ street guys, street right? guys like drug dealers, but. Then if we come back from China, then people no, are but like... we've been with our family before and been viewed as essentially like Chinese nationals too. Yeah. It's crazy, guys. Yeah, being it. Chinese... And, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It varies per border guard, but the people who like are like, yeah, being a border guard is my dream, they tend to be more on like archetypical. They fit a more of a stereotype. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you found this interesting, hit that like button. Uh, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.